Hello everyone, I'm Simay Dolaner. Today I would like to present my internship project that I contacted with Omics Logic Fellowship Program at Pine Biotech. My project focuses on transcriptomics analysis of two specific subtypes of the chronic lymphocytic leukemia in order to identify possible therapeutic targets that are necessary to establish an efficient treatment strategy. According to American Cancer Society, Leukemia is the second leading blood cancer, with approximately 60,000 new cases identified in 2020. Leukemia has different subtypes based on its origin, and the most common type in adults is the chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is the result of uncontrolled proliferation of the B cells. It has very really diverse biological and clinical background, which determines the stage of the disease. One of the most interesting stage is known as spontaneous regression, which is the disappearance of the tumor over time with or without any treatment. Since the spontaneous regression is not a common feature of the cancer cells, it's an unclear process and needs to be addressed in order to make it possible to trigger this mechanism in other types of cancers. For this, we need to determine well-established therapeutic targets which are the biological molecules that have a specific role in disease progression and can be manipulated with external forces. That's why in this project, I investigated the mechanism behind this process to understand the cell's decision by comparing the spontaneous regression and the progressive tumor state. Before going any deeper, let me introduce the origin of my dataset. This dataset is generated by a group of scientists and published as a bioproject in NCBI. In this study, they compared multiple samples from multiple subtypes of CLL. However, I chose spontaneous regression and progressive samples to understand the regression mechanism better. In order to reach a conclusion, I followed three main pathways. First, I explored my data by using principal component analysis, which allows us to see the variability between the samples. Next, I made comparative analysis between spontaneous regression and progressive samples by focusing on differentially expressed genes. And accordingly, I interpreted my results. From the exploratory analysis, I understood that there was a variation between the groups. So in the first scatter plot, we can see that healthy samples and the disease samples were well separated, which means there were significant variation between the groups. Then I wanted to see whether or not there was a difference in spontaneous regression and progressive state. In the second scatter plot, we can see that there was an improvement in principal components and the two groups were looking separate. So, after observing the variation between spontaneous regression and the progressive samples, I could ask the main question, what could be the reason of this difference? So, we know that genes decide the functioning of the cells and by that determines the identity of the cells. Therefore, the difference needs to be in gene regulation. Since there are mainly two types of genes, such as protein coding genes and non-coding genes, I continue my analysis with these two branches. In the comparative analysis, I examined both protein coding genes and non-coding genes to understand the mechanisms involved. As a result of differential gene expression analysis, I identified 870 protein coding genes, which are significantly based on their p-values and log twofold change. After the selection, I repeated the PCA to see an improvement on the basis of variance. However, according to first principle component, spontaneous regression had a lot of variability within its own group. Therefore, I checked the clinical data of these samples, but there was no difference between other samples. So the difference had to be in their biological background. That's why I choose the most diverse samples to compare with progressive samples to see the real difference between these two groups in the means of gene expression pattern. And you can see from the second scatter plot, there was significant improvement with the well-separated two groups. 
This is the heat map of the protein coding genes, showing the patterns between spontaneous regression and progressive samples. It's obvious that most of the genes were upregulated in spontaneous regression, while they downregulated in progressive ones. In order to indicate the involved pathways, I made an enrichment analysis. Interestingly, although there were different pathways in upregulated genes, relatively common ones were related to RNA molecule. Besides, you can see the same concept with the downregulated genes. When I made a literature review, it revealed that as nearly 20% of CLL cells do not show chromosomal aberrations, scientists change their focus to RNA molecules, especially long non-coding RNAs, which are deregulated in many cancers. And these findings led me to the second branch of my study. I identified 33 significant link RNAs through the differential gene expression analysis with specific parameters. When I repeated the PCA with selected link RNAs, I could be able to see better separation between spontaneous regression and the progressive states. This is the heat map with the link RNAs, and it can be seen that most of the genes were upregulated in progressive samples compared to spontaneous regression. Since these significant link RNAs can be more important than previous talks, let me briefly explain what are the link RNAs. Link RNAs are one kind of non-coding RNAs that contains higher than 200 nucleotides and encompass thousands of different transcripts in humans. Interestingly, there are nearly 100,000 of link RNAs and these numbers increasing each year with the new studies. Link RNAs significantly function in gene regulation and in many cellular mechanisms as well as in tumor progression by deregulation. They can regulate the gene expression at epigenetic or transcriptional levels through histone modification, DNA methylation, or DNA acetylation. Moreover, they can create hybrids as RNA protein to regulate the expression at post-transcriptional level, including regulation of phosphorylation and ubiquitination. In cancer progression, they can serve as either tumor suppressors, tumor promoters, or even can be both at the same time for some cancer types. Because of these roles of link RNAs, recent studies highly focused on identification of link RNAs as therapeutic targets. Since these molecules' expression is tissue and disease specific, this specificity makes them excellent targets compared to protein coding genes. As my next step, I made a detailed literature review for the each link RNA and their SAS mRNAs. Even though the detailed explanation can be found in, found in supplementary table, most probably they involved in several pathways, including tumor growth, metastasis, cell survival, and regulation of tumor microenvironment, such as immune system. So here you can see three important examples from top 10 significant link RNAs. PTPN22AS1 is upregulated in spontaneous regression samples. Since the overexpression of the PTPN22 gene can attenuate the cell death signals in CLL, the CLL cells may epigenetically silence this gene through the link RNA PTPN22AS1 and trigger the spontaneous regression. Therefore, if the upregulation of this link RNA can be induced by an external factor, it could be a therapeutic target for CLL cells. Next, link RNA is the PCF11AS1, and it is also upregulated in spontaneous regression samples. Studies show that the low levels of PCF11 gene can induce spontaneous regression in neuroblastoma by regulating survival pathways. Thus, the link RNA PCF11 AS1 may downregulate this gene at multiple levels to trigger the spontaneous regression in CLL as neuroblastoma. So, upregulation of this link RNA can be used as therapeutic strategy. And the last link RNA is the SYNGAP1 AS1, which is upregulated in progressive samples. As the SYNGAP1 gene is epigenetically silenced in most of the cancers, 
This suppression results in tumor progression through activation of the metastasis. Thus, the upregulation of the link RNA, syngap one as one can knock down this gene at the epigenetic level, leading to aggressive tumor progression in CLL patients. Basically, if we can downregulate this link RNA, syngap one gene can be reactivated, leading to inhibition of tumor spread, and maybe it can trigger the spontaneous regression in CLL cells. As a result, these findings suggest that regulation through the link RNAs might have a major role in cells' fate, and their detailed examination can enlighten the way of discovery of the possible therapeutic targets. In future studies, each link RNA should be investigated to observe their functional pathways by overexpression and suppression studies in different cancer types to understand their certain roles. Additionally, next study which considers these findings should combine the protein coding genes and non-protein coding genes since these two groups reveal significant results separately, their combination can lead to feature selection and determination of specific pathways which affected from each other. Lastly, as each research, this study had several limitations that needs to be overcome to conduct more efficient studies. First of all, spontaneous regression samples had diverse biological background, which increased the necessity of the detailed examination of these samples. Furthermore, due to this variability, it was hard to identify the significant pathways. And as the sample number was limited, more comprehensive research is needed to support these findings. These are some of my references, and before I finish my presentation, I would like to thank this scientific community for their endless support. During my internship at Pine Biotech, I had a chance to practice my skills on small projects, attend online courses which were enriched with quizzes and hands-on assignments, and participate in several webinars. This educational journey was very valuable for me to enhance my knowledge, perspective, and my abilities. As I always wanted to involve in international studies, I could be able to make it real with this project. I'm really grateful to all of my advisors who were there when I needed anything, anytime. I'm very happy to join this bioinformatics family. Thank you.